but before that why it is come into picture and also we'll see that means in a private equity why we should discuss that products will uh, put some light on that all right so uh, if i talk about private equity you know private equity it means we are talking about private investment instruments am i right if we talk about private equity <coughs> we are talking about private investment investment instruments <coughs> and what are those private investment instruments so it means any any company can create it if i ask you question like can you list your company directly on stock exchange i'm sure no you cannot right so there is a process it's a book building process before reach out to the ipo you will have to follow some certain regulatory norms conditions obligations and everything but if i talk about private in investment instruments that would be little customized right so investor directly can approach or company can directly approach to the investor directly means directly they'll approach it and investor can invest directly in company but if company want to raise let's say x y z company <coughs> if this company want to raise fund as i said company has of course that the last option see ipo it's not a first option again understand that as well ipo initial public offering in the name you might see that initial public offering public offering it means it's a first you know option or choice where company can go ahead and you know uh, dilute uh, means board member will dilute their stake and raise funds for their business now it's not a first option before that you would see lots of investment uh, private investment instruments lots of means lots of for example let's say term loan they'll go ahead with term loan so in term loan you would see multiple options like revolver credit all right delayed uh, drawn term loan you would see <coughs> short term term loan all right many more means many more if 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 this company is in let's say uh, finance business like nbfc non banking financial institution they can go ahead with asset back end securities mortgage back end securities right apart from that the institution can ask or approach investors to invest through uh, loan obligations as well like ncds right as such of course they'll uh, request or approach investors to invest in their business at higher or uh, interest rates <coughs> apart from that see investors can invest money in company so where they can directly uh, invest through swaps so here swaps it means we are talking about revenue <coughs> revenue swaps so where private equity funds will invest in revenue swaps so they'll exchange revenue of that company with fixed cash flows right so this is how your investments come into picture in private equity business now again so if investor invest of course investor will comes with certain conditions right investor will whenever investor <coughs> invest any money in any business they always expect return and assurance not guarantee assurance which is different assurance it means yes i'll do it or i'll return it but what if if something goes wrong again company will not be able to return that money to the investors but yeah so with assurance it means the sign certain documents like assignment agreements or asset agreement 
सिक्योरिटी परचेस एग्रीमेंट परचेस प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट मेमोरेंडम और यू वुड सी अदर डॉक्यूमेंट्स एज वेल सो दे एक्चुअली साइन डॉक्यूमेंट्स एंड इन्वेस्ट दर मनी इन दैट पर्टिकुलर कंपनी बट सो दिस इज अ डायरेक्ट प्रोसेस फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट से यू हैव यू नो हंड्रेड्स ऑफ क्रोर मनी बट यू डोंट हैव टाइम सी टू इन्वेस्टिंग पार्ट इट्स नॉट अ ईजी इवन इफ आई आस्क यू टू इन्वेस्ट इन एनी कंपनी let's say on your own i am sure you would face lots of problems like for example let's say selection of right broker selection of intermediate uh, counterpart selection of uh, let's say custodian or maybe brokers interactive brokers who can facilitate for a, a successful you know transaction execution or settlement part so it's not a easy process see if you ask me to invest in one company still i would be able to manage it on my own but if i ask you to invest in Uh, let's say hundreds of companies then it's become difficult or challenging to invest you know in multiple companies and managing resource part financial modeling part reporting accounting regulations fundraising commitment management capital call and distribution management expenses along with all of this it becomes difficult and that's what same option same option if investor want to invest in multiple let's say companies that investor can go through p means private equity funds where private equity funds manager they actually source you know private deals or companies who are looking for a funds they actually source it and invest it in the variety of financial instruments like as i said term loan abs mbs loans ncds uh, <coughs> then swaps swaps it means revenue swaps basically so they invest it so we'll see that how financial products works in private equity apart from that maybe you would ask question like do we see any other instrument yes of course see bond and equity which is indeed i would say or by default they'll invest through equity bonds preference shares equity <coughs> bonds bonds it means risky bonds here i'm talking about then uh, preference equities preference equities and all so they directly invest through equity bonds preference equities and all all right so these are the financial instruments but apart from that i'll tell you something where private equity funds they also <coughs> invest in they also invest in fx market as well why fx market for a hedging purpose for hedging hedging purpose we will discuss that what is hazing and how that hazing works all right but we'll start from the uh, as i said we'll start from the let's say uh, term loan so we'll start from that so this term loan is basically it's a part of you know loan syndication how it works and also we'll see that but in private equity we'll call it as a bank debt if you're looking for any trade processing or recon or i would say like bank debt process then you can go through my youtube free session so i have already uploaded and will continue that series as well so you can you know opt or access that free content so <clears throat> what is revolver ddl abs mbs so we're going to post lots of session there as well all right so now let's see how clo your works here we are talking about clo clo it means collateralized loan obligations but under uh, <coughs> loan <coughs> syndication or bank debt <coughs> bank debts you would see two different types note it down please this one is important one one is clo CLO collateralized loan obligation CLO it means collateral so it means collateral it means assets <coughs> assets should be included or involved in this transaction collateral liest loan obligations and another one is cdo cd it again cd it means collateralized <coughs> debt obligation 
collateralized debt obligations under clo you would see different types of loans and facilities <coughs> facilities what is the difference between loans and facilities facilities it means it's like a credit card or credit line loans it means directly disburse that funding <coughs> so under loans you would see uh, short term and long term business loans <coughs> and under facilities you would see term loan facility as i said revolver credit or a ddl ddl it means delay drawn Uh, term loan facility, delayed drawn term loan facility. All right. So you would see uh, other as well uh, with you know more customization feature. But yeah. So here actually private equity see offer funding to invest in CLOs. It's a huge risky because what if the collateral values goes down? Collateral it means we'll discuss that how collateral works and all. But what if collateral value? let's say drop or goes down so ultimately once that value drops or goes down so it means you would be in trouble right your loan loan um, that <coughs> loan collateral if it is in let's say ten, under tension or depression so it means ultimately that will affect on the loans value and loan value ultimately it will drop so this is how your collateral works in private equity same for cdo and clo as well but under cdo you would see two different aspect one is bonds but basically only government can issue the bonds and but private private companies they comes with debentures debentures with backed of collateral right and apart from this you would see <coughs> asset backed securities mortgage backed securities when we say debt so it means always you would see word like securities in that particular instrument and when we say obligation obligation it means we are talking about loans that's the difference right loans and debt but in short technically you would see two different terms but what i believe both comes under debt so it means so anyways under bonds or under loans what we are doing so basically borrower is offering loan to the lender right lender will uh, sorry <coughs> my bad borrower is taking loans from the lender so lender is offering credit facility or loan in short to the borrower that's all all right but yeah so those instruments see theoretically it looks like okay very simple but those are very complex so we'll see that how you actually collateralized system works let's take the example example of uh, let's say yes bank why your private equity come into picture and i'll start from the very scratch right so let's say you are here as a borrower <coughs> you have applied for let's say home loan this is your house all right so this value cost is <coughs> 10 lakh as per market right so why you need a fund maybe you have to required funding <coughs> for personal use or maybe home construction development so it can it depends right depends and that's what you decided to uh, take a loan on your property right you are holding this property now you have ownership but you have decided <coughs> <coughs> you have decided to take a loan on this property all right but when you take a loan on this property what happened of course you will approach to the 
bank let's say here is bank right yes bank all right so you have approved to the bank bank is agreed with let's say loan process whatever loan that you want bank is ready with it but bank already mentioned it so they'll charge 9% interest payment or maybe let's say 9% is very less in india at the moment so let's say <coughs> bank confirm it they'll charge 15% interest payment if you are agreed let me know we can go ahead with this deal see loan amount is 10 lakh 15% which is interest payment <coughs> for ana so this is all about agreement if this counterpart is ready what will happen i'll uh, tell you now they will sign one agreement <coughs> sign one agreement agreement basically that would be your power of attorney power of attorney power of attorney it's a legal document which provides you know legal rights to anyone if if you let's say if you sign power of attorney with me on any of the goods then i'll be the legal owner of that property including i'll have a selling rights of that property as well so it means i can sell that property without your permission once you sign power of attorney so it means you are uh, you are uh, <coughs> you are agreed with you know to transfer your ownership of that particular property to other one so it means when you opt for a loan what you do you sign contract you sign contract or you can i can say you sign will sign <coughs> obligation which is power of attorney see this power of attorney is like a irrevocable documents it will not revoke uh, you know before the maturity let's say if the maturity is for 10 years so that banker will hold the ownership of 10 years along with that banker will hold the rights if the power of attorney will define other important terms like principal <coughs> interest payment and then ownership ownership title if you repay this then bank will revoke this revoke it means revocation of power of attorney to the original owner of a property so you will get your original power of attorney then you can sell uh, that property to anyone right so this is how actual process happened so now let's go ahead let's say uh, this person means x person is decided to go ahead and take the loan so bank offer funding right bank now offered funded <coughs> as per the requirement so this amount has been funded all right so once the bank funded of course bank will ask you to transfer power of attorney so let's say borrower <coughs> poa to the bank all right so now this poa represent collateral so this collateral see ultimately in real estate we cannot transfer property from one location to another we don't have that facility correct if i purchase let's say land in your village can you transfer that land to my village no it's not possible so it means that properties are uh, e <coughs> immovable i would say so you cannot move them and that's what we sign power of attorney to ensure that uh, we are holding legal rights of that property so it means we can sell it out any point in time in future if it is required all right so let's say we have power of attorney but this power of attorney sometime means rbi won't allow to keep with bank so sometime might happen that bank can you know easily manipulate the documents and <coughs> take the undue advantage of that particular documents and that's what bank always ask Uh, you know lender to appoint <coughs> appoint trustee appoint trustee <coughs> trustee basically hold all these pois in digital format or in their locker so in <coughs> modern form you can say custodian 
हु कैन टेक द कस्टडी ऑफ बैंक्स एसेट्स और बैंक्स ऑब्लिगेशन एंड इवेंचुअली इन लोन मार्केट यू वुड कॉल इट एज अ वेयर हाउस इज वेल सो वेयर हाउस बेसिकली दोर और दे नो सॉरी इट्स लाइक अ स्टोर सो वेर यू कैन ट्रांसफर ऑल यूर यू नो डॉक्यूमेंट्स एट वन प्लेस एज एन एसेट्स और कोलेट्रल एंड दैट ट्रस्टी और कस्टोडियन और वेयर हाउस फैसिलिटी एजेंट विल टेक योर ऑफ इट ऑल राइट सो दिस इज द वन प्रोसेस सी so far let's assume it so 10 lakh loan <coughs> and everything was going well but suddenly what happened bank is now facing issue with liquidity now bank is facing uh, issue with liquidity so bank is looking for more let's say a uh, funding so how bank can raise funding if i ask this question to you let's say now the bank is looking for a funding then how bank will uh you know raise additional funding to uh, mitigate their you know cash demands and all come on <clears throat> can you tell me if now banks let's say yes bank is looking for additional funding so how bank will mitigate that their requirement funding requirement अभिजीत बैंक बैंक यूजुअली सेल दैट लोन इन द मार्केट दैट लाइक सिक्योरिटाइजेशन एंड देर इज द मनी राइट सो इट मींस नाउ बैंक इज होल्डिंग बैंक इज होल्डिंग पावर ऑफ एटर्नी राइट so basically power of attorney it means that power of attorney documents will represent the assets all right so this po is backed with assets because this is a property right it's a property home so this poa will represent the ownership in this particular home or property and that's what we'll call it as a asset backed security so it means this power ni power of attorney is backed with home which is value of rupees 10 lakh current market value now see in general cases if you see bank will definitely try to you know open more saving accounts or current accounts where people they can you know invest but it's like a snacks it's not a uh, you know big <coughs> big business opportunity where they can actually means raise funds in bulk and invest because if you see rbi has a certain obligations means so many you know Uh, regulators they will have their different different obligations when you raise funds so you cannot directly uh, do the business of that whole amount so you will have to invest in certain instruments and everything <coughs> by ensuring you have enough liquidity and all <coughs> so it means only 70% amount that you are going to invest not 100% again here question would be like then uh, how can we resolve this so as abhijit said so you will have a, now opportunity or i would say facility to convert that <coughs> convert that obligation or i would say uh, poa transfer this poa to whom <coughs> so there are two options one bank can create spv spv is basically again it's kind of institution right kind of a private equity fund but it's not a private equity funds so only for a special purpose special purpose it can be anything anything means anything it's like a fund so you can list that spv special purpose vehicle entity so as i said it's like a pe fund only <coughs> it's like but it's not pe fund or h funds why because you would see why we create spvs we create spvs special purpose vehicle entities for special purposes for example let's say if uh, if let's say i have created special purpose vehicle entity to invest in only startup companies so it means my spv is in uh, <coughs> interest is to invest in only startup companies correct but if you invest in my spv you can invest it so that becomes for you so you have invested in special purpose vehicle entity so it means if you want to create your own spv you can create it 
if you don't want then that's fine you can invest in other spvs as well <coughs> so it means bank can create spv or bank can appoint even spv if they already spv is there so bank can appoint that spv why spv is important now i'll tell you so once you appoint spv you can transfer this poa power of attorney document so basically this is your collateral other way around right it's a collateral it's a collateral so go and go and check it here so we are talking about this collateral collateralized loan obligation so if you see we have a loan as well so this person already taken loan of 10 lakh right on property so it means this has become your loan loan but if i talk about power of attorney that becomes your collateral so this is big, uh, this is basically collateralized already this person collateralized loan obligation right so now so that obligation which is bank is holding but bank is facing liquidity so bank want to generate more profits uh, or more let's say cash flows then bank will go ahead with poa and poa that will be transferred to the <coughs> special purpose vehicle entity once that you know spv special purpose vehicle entity received this obligation again as i said it's a asset right if you received any assets so you can split that assets into small tranches and you can list that tranches or maybe you can you know issue that tranches in market so it's very simple so once you have once you received this poa again so spv will hold this poa poa it means power of attorney and then spv will go ahead with securitization process <coughs> security or securitization process okay now your question would be like so why securitization is important i'll tell you once the poa received to the spv see spv it's a entity created let's say for a fund raising purpose so it means spv will help to securitize banks assets so it means bad assets or banks assets into different tranches or different form of let's say another assets to raise additional funding uh, for a bank all right so here if you see this is a home loan and that's what bank can create mbs mortgage back end securities sorry spu can create mortgage back end securities here you might see class as well mbs a <coughs> mbs b and again let's say mba mbs e is offering let's say 5% interest payment b is offering 6% interest payment so b it means basically let's say it is for a risky one a let's say which is healthy one so there is no risk which is high risk involved but now if you see this you know entire loans or abs if you see directly they will represent ownership in uh, poa which is already deposited in custodian or maybe i would say you know here po it means your collateral documents which already it was issued so ultimately <coughs> mbs would be a security mbs would be a security but this mbs is holding ownership right in poa which is power of attorney and this power of attorney represent this home and that's what now if you uh, put everything in a systematic way let's say first person taken loan and transfer power of attorney to the bank then <coughs> so this is becomes a basically loan process collateralized loan other way side so it means from this borrower to bank then if the bank need again additional funding so bank can collateralize that power of attorney uh, to the let's say spv then spv will help to raise funding to the banks because spv will split split Uh, this you know poa <coughs> into small units so that becomes your securitization basically and that units which will issued in market so basically here finally the hedge funds and hni investors <coughs> they'll participate to purchase mbs abs or different financial instrument and that's why your fund come into picture private equity now you can relate so it means private equity funds 
invest in abs and mbs why because of this interest payment why because of if they want to diversify and take the <coughs> benefit of interest payments and all they'll invest in such a financial instruments other way around a fund invest so it means why fund will invest because directly fund will get opportunity to hold ownership rights in this particular property that's what they invest now understand the you know fund flow so here again <coughs> private equity funds will invest in mbs and abs so basically this entity will receive let's say 10 lakh <coughs> cash right so sp will accept it and that cash will sent out to the bank for more business where bank can commit bank can commit sorry 10 lakh 5% interest payment on you know that raised money additional funding which is uh, the funding raised through special purpose vehicle entity so basically then <coughs> then again bank will every month or maybe every quarter bank will settle the 5% interest payment in the books of SPV but if you see <coughs> what is the benefit of you know this bank bank received additional 10 lakh now bank has a liquidity plus bank will earn interest payment from this as well which is 10 percent but maybe it's an assumption where a depositors money is also it was let's say same so it means here might see around seven to eight percent interest payment on you know deposit as well let's say on 10 lakhs so basically one or two percent still bank will have that you know leverage or profit with bank now uh, if the bank has received you know additional 10 lakh again bank can go in market and issue another you know this loan to again another counterparts so then in this particular transaction bank will have additional opportunity to leverage it out but <clears throat> basically in india it's not allowed to do this but in us and uk those banks are allowed to do this but apart from banks so private equity funds also do the same thing basically Private equity funds want in you know, a risky transaction or risky business where they actually target and invest. <clears throat> Why? Because to invest in ABS and MBS, as I said, it would be risky one. So private equity fund managers, they negotiate well and they actually, you know, uh, ask for a higher interest payment. Go and check the news. Baijus has taken loan uh, from the hedge fund, one of the hedge fund, Doppner something. I'm not able to recall his name. <clears throat> fund. <clears throat> by just taken you know by just signed facility for 2000 crore but that institution h fund manager only uh, paid 800 why because later on means post covid uh, the valuation or business of you know by just drop down and that's what they couldn't continue means the doctor something you know fund they couldn't continue with the <clears throat> continue with the by just deal all right because by just uh, they collateralize their assets and take a loan around 800 crore so it means i believe uh, great lakes assets entire assets and technology it was collateralized <clears throat> finally what happened i'll conclude it so uh, that you know deal got cancelled cancel it means uh, doppner actually you know they are means post covid they were not interested in uh, the baiju's business so that directly that fund manager issued legal notice stating that we are looking for a repayment so it means we don't want to provide you additional funding so what we want like we want our funding back and then that's when that buy just came in trouble lots of trouble so actually the deal was signed for 2000 crore but only that institution uh, <coughs> transfer 800 crore but now if you see within a two years of time span that interest amount two to three years let's consider two to three years or four years within a four years of time span what i have seen like uh, 600 crore which is amount is due for interest payment so just think about it so almost 90 percent so 800 which is principal and 600 crore which is <coughs> interest payment so total buys is now uh, now we'll have to pay eight uh, sorry 1400 crore to that particular hedge fund so just think about it and it's an opportunity so private equity funds hedge funds see harsh realities which is something different if the hedge fund or private equity manager if they if they're interested in this particular assets then they can invest through like this and once the interest liability or principal liability let's say which is higher 
then they'll directly take control of this property. Now your question would be like, so why, sir, they'll do it? See, I know it. Fund manager's job is not to you know run the business. Their job is to provide funding. But once they create a pressure on this particular asset, so assets value will drop down in market so that they can easily you know take a control of these assets without any legal hassles. And once they take a control, of course, they'll invest and multiply this, you know, 10 lakhs value is like, let's say, 2 crore, 3 crore, 5 crore, 10 crore. And then again, they'll sell it out to the people like us through IPO. Now I'll come to the IPO. As I said, IPO, it's not a first event. IPO, it's an end events. End event, it means if company want to make a fool to the people like us, not even company, but investors like, you know, or institutions like private equity or hedge funds, they actually invest and same assets, you know, once that asset value got multiply in the market, then they come up with the IPO. And then people like us who are looking for a 10% or 20% benefit, see, investor we, or institutions who have already multiplied their assets by 10x and highly overvalued asset now they are selling to you because they are not interested. Private equity funds now they are not interested in business. And that's what they want to transfer that IP or securities to you. And people are like, they're crazy. They'll participate and buy. Directly they'll buy. <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to get into any, any arguments, but yes. So now if you see your collateralized system works like this, and that's what your private equity funds and hedge funds, they'll come into picture because they invest through ABS and MBS. Why? As I said, their intention could be primary intention is to earn interest payment. But secondary interest, uh, that intention is to look for a diversification. Third is if they want to target that property or if they're looking for a property as such so that they can directly invest. Now, if you see uh, <clears throat> the Dockner's intention, I'll tell you. They wanted to pull this Baidus in trouble. Why? Because Baidus is one of the other tech which is working globally. All right. And they have even potential as well. Not maybe now, but see, slowly and steadily people will accept and of course they'll work on their services and <coughs> ultimately that will give huge profit opportunities like countries like India, China, means other countries as well. And that fund manager was aware about it. That's what that fund manager wanted to, you know, pull that entire board in trouble. And now I'll tell you the ripple impact. Ripple impact, it means the action of that particular funding, what happened by this had to uh, sold out their assets, Great Lakes assets to the other entity. So they have sold it out now. They are not holding any Great Lakes assets. They're only, even though they are planning to uh, uh, sold out their, uh, sell out their, sorry, sold, uh, sell out their uh, Akash, you know, business line as well. So that happened. And that, you know, fund managers take that opportunity to multiply their assets. It's a, it's a business, right? First, give a large, and once you take it, then of course it's like a lollipop. Take that lollipop and then again they'll uh, <coughs> create a lots of troubles. Once you are in trouble, again they'll ask if you need a funding, we'll provide funding but on discount. Let's say if a property value is 10 lakh, they'll say only will offer uh, value which is 2 lakhs on your property. If you want, take it otherwise that's fine. So this is how you know big fund houses they play and take the control of uh, such a securities and all. And now if you ask me like securitization, yes, of course, so this is your securitization. All right. <coughs> now you tell me if you have any question around this. So this is how your private equity funds enter. This is how your loan collateral, you know, securitization works. This is how your even loan works. But I'll give another example for a loans or different, different. But same example also, if you can replicate, you can, you know, relate with loans as well. So instead ABS, you would see, here, <coughs> term loan, same, same, uh, you know, pattern would be remain same. Instead, only you can change this one. <coughs> this one. Instead, ABS, let's say here, same pool can create term loans. Let's say term loans, <coughs> term loan A. Here you might see a revolver credit facility B. <coughs> so, where <coughs> SP will create collaterals and raise funding through term loans <coughs> and uh, revolver credit facilities or delay drawn facilities. All right. <coughs> All right. 
So this is how you can uh, relate this EBS, MBS term loans, you know, uh, in your private equity products. And of course, private equity funds, they invest in such a financial products. All right. So now, so uh, if I talk about, let's say, private equity or investment part. So as I said, private equity funds, they invest in other instrument as well, apart from that, like swaps or FX and all. All right. So now just, you know, think about it. How FX we can, you know, uh, we can relate with this. First, think about it. You have private equity fund, which is in India, right? But <coughs> private equity fund manager contacted to the investor who is in US and asked that person to contribute 10 lakh. 10 lakh INR. Let's say INR ratio is $80 for per, <coughs> sorry, 80 rupees for per USD. <coughs> right, if you want to, let's say take one USD, then you will have to pay 80 rupees, 80 INR basically. Let's say this is the ratio. So it means if you now <clears throat> divide 10 lakh divided by 80 rupees so it would be around only basically 12500 USD with ratio of <clears throat> this one let's say this deal happened in 2019 <coughs> The rupees uh, a dollar price was 80 in INR, right? So let's say fund manager now raised funding which is 10 lakh from the US investor, right? In India, and this <coughs> investment, let's say invested in invested in uh, highly risky, let's say uh, equity or startups. <laughs> So within a two years of time span, what has changed? What has changed? Let's say now it's time to calculate current market value. Let's say 10 lakh which was invested, this value would change and this value which is at 15 lakhs. This you can directly transfer, but, but you cannot directly transfer already you have you have only raised 10 lakhs all right maybe let's say you had committed 10 percent 20 percent whatever commitment returns so that you can return it out but at the time of paying let's say 10 lakhs if you are paying 10 lakhs what will change i'll now tell you if you return this 10 lakh <clears throat> just do the calculation 10 lakhs divided by 80 let's say 2 or 0.5 something which is current market you know dollar price maybe I, I i don't have exact data but i'm just assuming <clears throat> let's say rupees value which is 82.5 so 10 lakh divided by 82.50 so that becomes <clears throat> that becomes 12121.21 12,121.21 but but <clears throat> here is a catch investor paid investor paid to you 12,500 right so that your 10,000 value which is at the moment if you convert into USD so which is around at 12,121 see the shortage 1 to 1.21 minus just do it one two five zero so three hundred and seventy eight dollar which is still you will have to pay extra so ultimately if you convert this into your rupees so you will have to pay almost thirty one thousand extra you will have to pay 
uh, you will have to pay means calculation would be like this 10 lakh 31,250 as a capital only now your question would be like sir what happened in this case can you elaborate more see actually fluctuations in currencies two currencies due to the inflation which has been impacted on your investment as well invested value is 10 lakh but due to the currency change or change in the let's say invested currency invested currency got depreciated and uh, let's say fundraising currency got appreciated so this is kind of a fx transaction due to the fx let's say market volatility there is a uh, there is <clears throat> there is an impact on uh, your investment as well so you will have to pay more 31250 rupees extra to repay as a capital to the investor now what if sir if we can hedge if we can hedge it means mitigate the risk mitigate <coughs> risk <coughs> so how see fund managers are very smart they know it how to play it and why fund manager will pay this extra 31,250 now your question would be like sir what if let's say entire amount is from let's say investor what if if you you know if you return everything to the investor see general partners <coughs> as we have discussed in private equity you would see two type of people one is limited partners another is general partners so general partners basically charge commission on this investment after repayment of capital so now if you hedge this so it means you need to only return one lakh as a capital and whatever interest payment that you would see let's say interest payment committed was this so basically uh, on you know four lakh fifty thousand you can directly means fund manager directly can charge twenty percent but if you haven't let's say effective hedge in place so it means you will have to also return 250 which is fx currency loss basically to the investor so it means your updated gain from investment would be <coughs> thirty one two hundred thirty one two fifty four lakh fifty thousand thirty one two fifty so instead of this fund manager will have to charge incentive fees on this amount say this if you charge 20 percent on this of course it would be higher and if you charge this one of course it would be lower so why should i leave my returns right why should i leave my returns and that's what fund manager come up with hedging strategy hedging it means to control this 31,000 extra loss which will incur through this fx conversion then how they'll go ahead of course they'll sign put option or maybe they'll sign future or forward contracts right so depends depends on their investment horizon if it is long term of course then they'll go ahead with forward if they have a medium term investment horizon then might be they'll uh, you know go ahead with future and if they have any let's say short term investment horizon they can go ahead with options options it means now here in this case currency got depreciated it means they can <coughs> they can sell if the investment price is or capital let's say received price is 80 so that they can take a put INR which is 80 which is future dated put it means they'll sell it out this one and also they'll buy USD which is let's say one USD for whatever amount you would see they'll buy USD call uh, call USD as well so it means if investment price let's say goes high the dollar price goes high still they would be in profit and if INR price let's say got depreciated so they'll be in actually profit again here as well so it means of course through FX transa transaction they will have a loss of 31 to 50 but same profit they might see here as well which is here they will have means in a hedging they will have positive number and in FX transaction they will have negative number which which they want to pay it so if you see positive plus negative so they'll be able to mitigate that risk 
right through option contract hedge fund uh, or private equity fund will receive uh, 31250 which is profit and through fx transactions of course they will have to pay more so actually if you offset you know both 31 positive 31 to 50 minus 31 to 50 so there would be no impact so ultimately so this is how you can create a hedging and that's that's when your fx transactions also come in picture as well for a hedging purpose right so same uh, you can relate with the previous one example let's say means you know 10 lakh which is invested by the private equity fund that the fund is from uh, let's say uh, other country but that fund let's say raised investment from different country uh, country of investor let's say india or maybe other country right so if you raise fund like this then of course then definitely you will have to look for hedging as well now <clears throat> third part is your question maybe would be around so you mentioned about swaps why swaps will come in picture same example if i continue same means same example let's say obligations <clears throat> so uh, first of all if you see bank has a poa right that bank has a poa 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 with 10% sorry 15% on this amount <clears throat> what if if the revenue from this transaction if you see revenue just calculate it for a better understanding it would be around 15 sorry 1.5 lakhs <coughs> for per annum which is a revenue <coughs> revenue from this transaction what if there is a P fund, P fund is ready to invest, which is 10 lakh, but with different interest payment. Of course, S bank will try to, you know, negotiate with P fund and let's say they have negotiated that private equity fund is ready to invest, which is 10 lakh through 10% interest payment. <coughs> so if you see, this P fund will transfer 10 lakh to the uh, bank and bank will, you know, provide 10% return to the, let's say, private equity fund. Or I would say total revenue, total revenue, it means whatever revenue it will be generated. So that also happened. Sometime uh, yes, bank can transfer entire, you know, revenue means 1,50,000 to the P fund and P fund can, you know, <coughs> provide benchmark benchmark or basically you can say indices interest rate let's say interest rate indices is which is at 10 percent so p p fund can offer which is one lakh one lakh you know uh, interest payment to the uh, yes bank so now here if you see revenue if you see the net revenue so ultimately p fund would be in profit p fund would be in profit of fifty thousand why because one lakh which is one lakh cost but as i said s bank is going to receive 15 percent interest payment from whom from the end investor right and that's what bank always will try to neg negotiate with lower amount let's say bank did it and this deal got executed finally finally <coughs> p fund will receive revenue of fifty thousand so that 50,000 it will be a revenue of private equity funds and same bank will book as a expense on swaps transactions but eventually if you want to you know sign up this particular in this is kind of even interested swaps as well so if you want to sign interest swaps like this so basically your notional amount plays very crucial role notional amount it means basically it's a loan amount loan amount plays crucial role if you have a loan amount then you can look for a exchange of cash flows because this is the part of your cash flows and when you when you exchange cash flows so that becomes your that becomes your revenue so revenue that you can exchange it and this is comes under your uh, revenue or i would say cash flow 
you know in uh, revenue or interest rate revenue so that depends all right so i'll give two more examples but not now we'll discuss uh, equity swaps or other you know uh, revenue swaps from an organization perspective and all how it will happen so we'll discuss that as well so how private equity funds can identify you know companies and invest through irs but yeah so now if you have any questions please go ahead and ask